All right, you're gonna like this one. Welcome to Whiskey Vault, by the way. Yeah. Hello. It's uh, from Mike Callahan, the Titan of Whiskey. Daniel in the distance, dude. Oh my God, it's Coleman. Quick, get that Titan. Magnificent bastard. Thing done with, so we can drink some whiskey. This, this is uh, a little heartbreaking. Okay. Because you know the, the, the thing that you learn whenever you're older mm. is you can't do it all. Right. Fortunately, you and I have been put in a position where we can do like a lot of cool yeah. people that wanted to do. But, but I had to give up on my unicycle career. <laughs> you know what, that's how, <laughs> that's how Ranty Dan becomes uh, a more three-dimensional character. <laughs> oh. He's very curmudgeonly. Yeah. And but he unicycles? Handle, this handlebar beard. But the thing that really brings him joy yeah. is unicycling. You know, yeah. What is the most festive thing in the world, right. but he's just pissed off and angry. He's like, I. You, you know that. <laughs> he can't. He's not a unicycle. You know that Zach unicycles? Uh, we have a unicycle in the tower. Academy Zach? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. So you should learn it. If you could unicycle whilst complaining, yeah. that's a winning formula. You know what formula. I think? That's a winning formula. The worst thing ever. Dude, I'm giving you. So, and then at the end of every episode, yeah. I'm like, I just fall off the unicycle. Do you comprehend the level of gold I just drop in your <laughs> lap? I'm telling you. Unicycle I'm telling you, I'm telling your name is Ranty Dan. You talk about all the things you want to complain about every waking hour anyways. <laughs> You have a handlebar beard, and you're on a unicycle, <laughs> so people can't look away. Like, this is <laughs> gold. <laughs> this is... Anyways. That would be hilarious. All right, I, I was talking about you can't Can you do it all. imagine the injuries of trying to learn how to unicycle at 44 just, years just old? Just put up a camera. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, we were at Perclati. Oh, uh, yeah. And we never got to go to Colombia. Everybody else, but we were in the, all the MPs. Yeah. We were traveling around Scotland with a bunch of MPs. Yeah. The we had, tribe. We and got to shoot an insider thing on Brooklady. Yeah, so we had to stay at Brooklady longer. So they got in the bus and they went. Yeah, we missed Coloman. And I they, was kind of bummed about that. But yeah. not, I mean, the Brooklady experience was really great. No, it was amazing. It was but amazing. I love these guys. And I, since they first started releasing whiskey, I've been a fan. This is USA Batch 4. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 1,260 bottles. That's it. Oh. Right? Not many. Okay. Now, here's why I'm excited about how, this. Yeah, how is it different from the regular My release? My favorite ever, uh, Kill Omen. Yeah, yeah. No exception. Yeah. Madeira Cask Kill Omen. Okay. But We've you, tried it on the channel. You often like Madeira Cask. Yeah. Yeah, but the Kill Omen Madeira, you say, is really yeah. okay. But yeah. this one is a blend of bourbon barrel, sherry cask, and Madeira. It's got 65% bourbon barrel, 5% oh. sherry cask, 30% yeah, yeah, yeah. Madeira yeah. cask. Mm -hmm. They created an in-house blend of three of multiple barrels. Yeah. And that's what they released to the US exclusively. Yeah. I, I it's mm -hmm. hard to explain how excited about this I am. Okay, so that right there, that mm -hmm. I think what you're describing is a perfect snapshot of one of the few things I think would be amazing to unlock mm -hmm. as a larger distillery. Oh yeah. Because with larger distilleries, you have more um, people with uh, opinions and vested interests and often corporate money. It's just yeah. so much horse Like I don't really have any interest in that at all. But the one thing that would be, <laughs> was Sorry. that the Wilhelm scream? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My son Jackson <laughs> set his Right. Text tone to the Wilhelm to the Wilhelm scream. Right, because yeah. he knows what the Wilhelm scream is. I'll give you one guess why Jackson is highly informed on the Wilhelm scream. We do have ADD, by the way. Go ahead. My dad. Oh, of course. My it, dad. That would be something introduced he him to the, to the Wilhelm, Wilhelm scream. scream. And then you can never not hear it in movies again. Yeah, because it's this old piece of audio scream. There's a great that YouTube has been video used for decades. Anytime you hear a scream, it's off in the wilderness. <laughs> yeah, there's a great YouTube video that tie, ties together like 100 or 50 films or something yeah. with the Wilhelm scream from yeah, Star yeah. Wars to Indiana Jones. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, back to my point. The, the ability to have something where you have enough barrels and they've been sitting around long enough, mm -hmm. enough inventory, and you can start piecing together a blend with, you said, bourbon? Bourbon, sherry, and Madeira. Sherry and Madeira, yeah. just to have those available for yeah. you to start playing around with, that only can happen That's cool. at an established distillery of a meaningful size. Yeah. Now all the horse <laughs> like corporate, you know, go f*** yourself stuff, yeah. no. But that ability would be 
Oh my Isn't god. That cool. Yeah, that would be amazing. So right? here's the coolest thing. I mean, that because the, the other reality on the big guys is they might find those yeah. and they don't get the chance to release them. Yeah. yeah but yeah. Coleman does it. So you have to be yes. big enough yeah, yeah, yeah. to have the resources, yeah. but not so big that you answer to the overlords. <laughs> right? Like there's a story that we were told of a guy who's very famous mm. in whiskey yeah, yeah. in Scotland, very famous. He was telling a friend of ours, I just blended the best thing I've ever released in my entire life. It's my opus. Oh, nice, yeah. Period. Yeah, yeah. If I die, this is the best thing I ever did. Okay. He took it to the board, yeah. and they were like, we need three times the bottle count. And so they had to try to recreate it at three times the bottle count. Right. He said, they released it. That's what everyone got to try. Right. There was this big thing about how it was his blend. Mm -hmm. And he says, it's 60% as good and the only bottle that exists of the original blend is on his desk. That sucks. And that's it in the world. That sucks. You know what? If if I were him, right? Because I understand there there is mm -hmm. economics that you have to consider. Like the, the people that are very corporate, they're they're coming from a place of they want to make sure they maintain the health of the company financially. Right. Fine. But in that situation, like also the quality of and the integrity of what's getting bottled. Right. In that situation, if this I don't even know who you're talking about, but this right. person is big reputation, master at their craft. Just release it at three times the price. Yeah. Right? And yeah. this guy can release this opus into the world and he can talk about it full-throatedly. Just yeah. with total sincerity and authenticity and passion about how this is my swan song. This and is my life's work. It will work. My life's work in a bottle. You release it at three times the cost. And now you can make money, yeah. but to make it 60% of what he was going for. Yeah. That's no bullshit. Number crunchers. Yeah. All right, you ready? Yes, I am. Oh, I hate it. No. Uh, that would be really <laughs> bad. Isn't it? Yeah. Dude, there's so much more peatiness on this than I was yeah. expecting. Well, Kiloman, they're I, known I know, for I it. I know, but I wasn't ready. It was like a nutty peatiness. And salt water. Yeah. It's briny. I don't often get like a nutty angle on peatiness, but definitely briny. I think that's the sherry. Yeah. Definitely briny. Come oh, on. man. This is smoked Come almonds. On. All right. I was eating and almonds last and night. And candy-coated smoked almonds. I was, I was eating almonds last night. They weren't smoked, but I've had those. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not wrong. That, that, that I think we had an amazing time in Scotland. Mm -hmm. I think my biggest regret is we didn't have time to get to Kilo. Yeah, I actually no. we didn't get to go to um, uh, Boonhaven either. Mm. And I'm more bummed about this yeah. than about Boonhaven. We were so close. Yeah, because I love We were on an island. Yeah. Ah. Uh. And it's zesty. Yeah. Like almost citrusy. You keep saying words. I just want to smell it. And uh, orange and cloves. I was going to say citrus. Yeah, there is this. Yeah. Like, like a, that potpourri you burn on the stove during bit Christmas. A, yeah, a tiny bit of a zest around all of that. That's orange, mm -hmm. uh, cranberries, cinnamon stick. And cloves, and then yeah. you boil it on the stove. Mm -hmm. Smells a lot like that. This is a sit-down whiskey. Oh, I really? oh, see. You can do that. I can. <laughs> he's popping a squat. He's yeah. rocking. He's rocking the slob squat. Oh no! <laughs> I dropped the Dude, microphone. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Should we compare? With what? I haven't even tasted it yet. Hang on a second. We'll kill him. No. That deserves to live on its own, man. That is honey cream, and the smoke is subtle and layered through it. It's not dominating. It's not harsh I'm or punchy. I need you mm. to shut up for a minute. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This one time in band camp? You're still talking. <laughs> <laughs> you pierced the silence with band camp. Yeah. Oh, in the finish. It's like the, you know, usually the, the, the finish kicks in and then you can feel the slow drift. The finish kicked in, mm -hmm. there's no drift. Mm -mm. It feels like I just put the thing in my mouth. Yeah, it's very viscous. Mm. And again, mm. there is like a slight nuttiness. That's the, see, I've had beautiful Islas before. Right. I think that's kind of interesting to, to this is there's a little bit of a nutty angle. It's, it's a little bit grainy, like malty, right? Mm. And I think that's combining with all the sweetness to, and the sherry cask part and the Madeira cask part to give you this slight nutty, almondy, candied almonds. Oh, come on. All right. Son the of drift is <laughs> The drift has finally kicked in with the finish. Yeah, and it lingers mm -hmm. with a little bit of salt brine, salt water. Mm -hmm. That's a very different nose. After you get it in you, very different nose going back. 
Yeah. Yes, yeah, pull back the curtain on. I'm gonna add a dash of water, even though I'm probably gonna regret it. And petrichor? Yeah. Yeah, it could be. A little bit of a wheat and petrichor. Oh, it got more so with water added. Hmm. Sort of swimming pool note. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Like a chlorine? Mm-hmm. Hmm. More of the phenolic notes showed up. Oh, oh man. I just want to sit down and shut up. <laughs> no, it's... Ah, oh, that's ruined. Adding water destroyed everything that was magical to this. Mm. I'm going to tell you this, though. Mm. It's beautiful. You should tell me. It's beautiful. It's still lovely. Mm-hmm. The first most magical moment is that initial sip. Mm-hmm. That initial sip. Whenever you haven't acclimated to anything, and it's, it's all very new and very alive. Vibrant, very vibrant. Yeah, the subsequent things, they're still very nice, but you're acclimating to, to a few things that, in that initial sip, I'm missing them so much. I wish I could go back and, and re-experience my virgin moment with this. It phenomenon. turns a little more into the phenolic notes. And mm. loose starts to lose the almond. Mm. It gets a little more smoke and a little more brine and a little more grain malt. Mm. Mm. Uh, that malt. Still great. Yeah, the malt just matured beautifully. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's really nice. The brine is the front leading character, though. Yeah. Yeah, that sweet, uh, or that salt, that malt sweetness and that salty brine character. That's the hero of the entire thing. Yay. From beginning, the initial sip, the finish, to subsequent sips, that's going to be there continuously. But shark retired, 2358. So in the spirit of movement in aging whiskey, mm. how about strapping small barrels onto the lumbar of Whiskey Vault staff to twerk age some whiskey? <laughs> yeah! Pioneers! <laughs> Science! Something, something, something. <laughs> I like the cut of your jib. I would like to see anybody twerk <laughs> with a, a barrel. barrel. Yeah, I just love, even a, love yeah, this. <laughs> even a five gallon barrel like, is no light, joke. That's, that's, that's at I, least 100 I, to 150 pounds. I believe John is up to it. Yeah. <laughs> Trunk. Ah! Uh, here's, what I view, here's what I see happening. Workers comp yeah. all day long. <laughs> Hey, how'd you throw out your back? Well, this is working a whiskey barrel. This is neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah. but what is the legality of holding paychecks hostage until you force employees to sign waivers saying they can never apply for workers' comp? Oh yeah, that's illegal. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's yeah. what? Yeah. I tried to make it happen, man. You I can fire them. <laughs> I tried to make can't. it happen. We can't do the twerk. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I took a shot. <laughs> I love the blues. The amount of things you guys smell in a bourbon is kind of ridiculous. I keep waiting for one of you to say, you remember that hot July day in high school when we got that stale Mountain Dew out of the leftmost drink machine in the gym? <laughs> I smell hints, hints of that particular Mountain Dew mixed with just a smidge of the smoke from the fire the day my grandpappy burned his, held, his old outhouse down. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, you know, man, that is exactly what I smell, too. <laughs> That's great tasting notes. I kind of want to steal that someday. Uh, funny enough, Mountain Dew is made as a mixer for whiskey. Yeah. Originally. That's why Yeah, that's exists. where that, that video of what we talked about that oh, yeah, is yeah. where you put that comment. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Some, honestly, that's funny, but oftentimes I kind of think the way that we, that we do tasting notes, yeah. to make it clear and practical and helpful and yeah. accessible. Like, that's the goal. So you guys actually know, between two people, yeah. like, here's kind of what we're finding. If you don't find it, then I'm not going to say, well, I find it too, because, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. We're not trying to, like, prove each other right. But oftentimes we find the same stuff. Yeah. And I think at least what's the most fun is whenever you're not trying to make it overly practical or useful. Just having fun with it. Yeah, this reminds me of uh, yeah. this summer in my grandparents' backyard. They grew watermelons and... Like that. But here's the thing, that's actually the most scientifically accurate tasting note. But, it, so, but it's the least practical for other people. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. But in tasting with people in here from class, yeah, yeah. when we sit down, mm -hmm. when someone says something like that, yeah. that's actually the closest to the original way that your brain interprets smell. Uh, your, your nose goes from here to the part of your brain responsible for memory and emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if when you smell, 
your brain's first response is going to be emotion or memories. Mm -hmm. And so if you respond with a memory, mm -hmm. you're actually truer to the interpretation of your brain than when you try to understand why your brain gave you that memory. Yeah. Right? I wonder mm -hmm. if there's an audience for just living in that very first step. super personalized, irrelevant to anybody else in the world, but this is just the most visceral explanation of how I am you know, both physically and emotionally yeah. experiencing this whiskey. Because people will be like, I don't, should I buy it? Should I, I don't not know. buy it? Yeah. What do I do with that? Yeah. <laughs> no, it'd be fun, I think. Yeah, it'd be fun. I don't know if there's an audience for it, though. Yeah. Unless you make it very ranty. Hey, on, on a unicycle. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, if you were drinking on a unicycle. Oh, God. All right. Uh, hell yeah. Yep. Come on. One of these days, I'm going to get back to Isla. Not with my kids. My wife and I are talking about it. She, oh, yeah, would, yeah. she would like to go. This is, kids you don't, would be so bored. They, my, they would so bored. Yeah, it would be a problem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to get back specifically to Coloma. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your liver. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us.